and I'll blow your house in. Hey everybody, it's Dean, and of course, the boop. And we were just enjoying the classic story of three bacon buddies whose home came under attack from a mean old wolf with bad breath. But around here, we've got our own special twist on this troubled tale, because if these fellows had built their houses in Southern California, then the brick house would likely have not held up. Because here in SoCal, the big bad wolf is called Earthquakes. And when the ground starts shifting side to side, brick houses just don't crumble under the pressure. Sometimes they explode. So the hero of our story is going to be pig number two, who built his house out of sticks. In fact, the kind of wood construction that most of our houses are made of is literally called stick framing. And it actually does an outstanding job of staying put, even when the ground isn't staying put. But there is one thing that our little porcine woodworking pal will need to add to his house to ensure that it stays standing when the wolf comes around. That's right. And that is called shear walls. Now, in our experience, me and the boop, there are two kinds of homeowners out there, right? Those who have heard of shear walls, but still don't know what they are, and those who have never heard of shear walls, and of course, don't know what they are. But you need to, because in one form or another, shear walls are in your house right now. And especially if you're thinking about moving walls or removing walls, you need to know if you're dealing with a shear wall. They need special care, because the structural integrity of your house depends upon them. Let's give... Hey. Hey. <laughs> Let's give everybody a demo. So it just so happens that one of our projects is in framing stage right now, so I can actually show you what a shear wall looks like underneath all your drywall and stucco in your house so you can better understand it. But even that isn't quite enough. So to illustrate what I'm talking about, I built a little wall. Look at it, it's adorable. A little two by four wall like this is strong, but things in construction are often strong in one way and not in another. So how is this little wall strong? It's strong in what we call dead load. What that means is the compressive strength of these two by fours and this top plate allows it to carry a tremendous amount of weight straight down, gravity, vertical, straight up and down. How much weight? A little two by four frame like this could easily hold a thousand pounds, for sure. So don't worry about your house. Your house is very strong. It actually has a double top plate up here and blocking in between, it's strong, believe me. Your house is plenty strong, at least when it comes to dead load. Here's the problem with a two by four wall. Dead load is one thing, but what happens when the ground starts shaking and things start moving sideways? Oh no, what happened to my wall? Okay, so we repaired our poor little collapsing wall who had a lot of dead load value, but no shear value. It had no ability to withstand, look at that, lateral forces, shear. Houses don't normally just jump up and down, but they shake this way. So what's gonna keep your house standing upright? Well, what if we just take this little frame and we were applied to it a shear panel. Shear! Which is just a piece of plywood. Just one piece of plywood, just four nails. And guess what doesn't happen anymore? The wall doesn't collapse this way. So now, not only does the wall have dead weight value, but now it has the ability to resist lateral motion or what we call shear. And that is a shear panel. And this is what a shear wall looks like in real life. This is a fully grown up, mature shear wall. Thicker studs in between. The panel in this case is about four feet wide. Four by fours on each end. And all of this half inch plywood from the outside has been nailed according to an engineering schedule into those studs. And then down at the bottom of this shear panel, 
The bottom plate is bolted to the slab and on each end of this shear panel is a piece of hardware that we called a hold down. And guess what a hold down does? Yes, it holds it down. Very complex. Let me do that one more time. This is a hold down and it is holding the wall down. All right, so the moral of the story is when you open up your walls, let's say maybe you're remodeling, maybe you're patching some drywall, or maybe you're deciding whether you want to move a wall or put an opening in a wall. If you discover a wall that's got plywood on it, don't assume that that thing can just go away and be changed like any other wall in the house. Chances are it's a shear wall and that means it's been engineered into your house for a very specific purpose. It doesn't mean that this wall can't move. It just means we've got to get some professional advice about opening it up or replacing it if we do want to remove it. Okay, two final bits of insight. Let's check it out. Yes, heavy winds like the one that is coming out of our furry friend here are another reason for shear walls. In fact, almost everybody has heard the term wind shear and hopefully now you understand a little bit more about what that means. And two, for those of you living in a house built before the late 1970s, you have shear walls also, but since earthquake codes weren't anywhere near what they are today and plywood really hadn't made it into the structural mainstream, your shear walls look like this. This is what we call a lead embrace, and it's a piece of one by six that has literally been notched into these studs. That is the only lateral structural support that most older walls have. So there you have it. You've probably opened up your walls and seen these, and maybe you even accidentally cut them open. Not a good idea, because these guys are creating that lateral load in your house. Now, if you have cut them accidentally, all hope is not lost because there are hardware companies like Simpson Strong Tie that now make metal lead embraces that can be retrofit into an older wall. They only slice in a very tiny bit into a stud and they are nailed from plate to plate and they create extra lateral rigidity. Not as good as a big sheet of plywood, but in a pinch, they help. So there you have it. A new twist on an old tale, and hopefully now you understand shear walls a little bit better so you can take care of them, add them if you need to, and keep the wolf from blowing your house down. Be sure to watch the show every week, now starting at 9 a.m. from 9 to 11, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, all three at home with Dean. See you soon.